Hello and welcome to the Bike Century. My name's Ben and today I'm really excited to be able to show you this. This is the CF Moto 800 MT Explore Edition. Um, it is a, a evolution of the existing 800 MT Touring, which has been very, very popular for us. Um, obviously there is a, a fairly substantial price difference and I'll try and show you the reasons why that is. Uh, the existing Touring version is going to continue. This is going to run alongside it as a more premium version of the bike. I've done lots of videos of the 800 MT range, but there is a sport version with cast wheels and a lower spec. The Touring version, which is very similar looking to this and comes with the luggage. And now you've got the Explorer as well. So plenty to choose from. All three are available on the finance offer at 3.9% on HP and 4.9% uh, on PCP as well. So let's get into it. I'm not going to draw too much attention to the standard features of the bike because it is very similar uh, in a lot of ways to the Touring. There are just a few subtle differences beside, besides the cosmetics. Um, same size front wheel, but instead we've got more off-road looking adventure tyres. Um, so that's probably one of the, the biggest chassis changes, or, or in fact, probably the only chassis change. Uh, ever so slightly different front mud guard. Um, you'll see the MSC sticker on there, and I'll talk to you a bit about that in a minute. Obviously, the bike comes with ABS, twin discs, Jeju One radially mounted brakes, and adjustable suspension with braided lines. So that all comes as standard and is standard also on the Touring model. Similarly, the belly pan is also standard on this and the Touring model, as are the crash bars. The Sport model does not have a belly pan, but it does have the crash bars and it does have the auxiliary lights um, just on the front there. Headlights and screen indicators are all the same. We've got LED indicators. We've got a really nice LED headlight with spotlight uh, style projector beams and a manually adjustable front screen. Again, all the same across all three models. Um, the Sport model does not have hand guards. The Touring and the Explore do, as you can clearly see. The Explore, for the time being at least, only comes in this one colourway. So it is a metallic white with blue and silver trims. Looks absolutely stunning. Um, do love the gold wheels. I love them on the, uh, the Touring model and uh, I'm glad they've kept that on this bike. Engine is the same. It's the same engine that features in KTM's 790 range. It's an engine that CF Moto have been producing for them for quite a long time. So it's tried and tested, but connected to a Bosch electronic system rather than KTM's. And again, we'll get to that in just a second. There's some more off-road inspired features. You've got some grippy uh, surfaces on both the uh, the brake levers and on the footrests. The footrests do come with rubber mounts, but you can remove those. So you have a more motocross enduro style, um, you know, grip just underneath there if you wanted to use it off-road. The bike also comes with a center stand. The Sport does not come with a center stand. At the rear, it's pretty much the same as the Touring and the Sport. The same j one brakes with ABS and, uh, and obviously the same discs. The main difference in the braking system with this bike is that it has combined or dual channel ABS which allows the ABS on the front and rear wheels to be enabled or disabled individually depending on what rider mode you're in. Now I'll talk to you a bit more about that in a second when we get to the dash um, but the touring mode the touring bike does not have that it just has standard ABS so if you are looking for a bike that can go off-road this would probably be more capable or should be far more capable uh, than the touring and the sport. At the back, it features the free luggage. This is still on offer. It will still come with the bike. It's an aluminium luggage made by CF Moto. It's a very, very high quality set of luggage. As you can see, um, the box on this side does have a cutout for the exhaust, um, but the other side does not. Obviously, it's just a single exhaust. You do have the backrest, three keys. Each key opens every lock. So you've got two spares effectively, and they do come with the liners as well. Same as with the Touring model, this comes with a heated rider seat. Uh, I believe there is going to be an aftermarket option to allow you to adjust the seat height, but obviously with that, you will lose a little bit of comfort. At the moment, no option for a heated pillion seat, but I do believe that is something that is in China, so it may well be something that's available in the future. <clears throat> Coming around the front, as I said, cosmetically identical to um, its... Uh, teammates there 
on this side again you've got the same brakes the shades one brakes they're a subsidiary of brembo by the way so the brains brakes on this are exceptional um, these are tubeless rims by the way there's no tubes in there uh, and we do also have tire pressure monitoring on the touring model and on this as standard as well on this side you'll see um, the gear shifter so the bike does come with an up and down quick shifter as does the touring the sport does not and it is chain driven as you can see i believe the gearing and everything like that is as it was in the touring and the sport the bike comes with two keys um, that will allow you to remove the rear seat though there's no storage under there obviously it opens the fuel filler cap um, and starts the bike just allow it to boot up so this is really where all your money's going um, in the electronics of the bike and the functionality of the bike before we get into that i'll just highlight the fact that the explore still comes with a usb charger which is waterproof on this side and a 12 volt socket on this side as well the functionality the um, switch gear and everything like that has changed so this is identical to the new nk800 advanced um, still comes with similar functionalities uh, compared to the touring but the switch gear is the new style switch gear so the switch gear has now changed on this side as well so this is the same as you'd see on all the 450 models and the new models coming through so the center button here doubles up as a kill switch and a starter switch uh, you've also got the auxiliary light switch on this side rather than on the left side and obviously you've got the, uh, the hazard lights on that side as well so what's so great about this well the dash itself is a lot larger and it is touch screen and as you can already see uh, has carplay enabled so let's just go back to basics um, on the left hand side these two buttons are personalizable so you can change these to suit whatever function you want i won't get into too much detail and absolutely bamboozle you but you can pretty much use these to select a map a, a specific setting on the dash uh, change intercoms all that kind of stuff using carplay you've also got voice activation as well um, and these outer buttons here allow you to control the rest of the dash, fu dash functionality on the top here you've got your high beams you've got your cruise control settings very similar to the touring model uh, underneath here obviously you've got your horn and you've also got um, your indicators one of the things I've noticed about this bike compared to the touring the touring has self cancelling indicators the switch gear is a little bit vague I think the switch gear movement on the indicator is a vast improvement on the touring model I will say that straight off the bat so if we just push this button here this takes us into the standard dash mode now similarly to the touring mode you can change the rider modes the bike needs to be running so i'll leave that till last um, but the rider mode displayed up here is the current rider mode this is the basic dash layout you get there are two versions um, a low light and a high light version which switch between the bike automatically as do the headlights so the headlights will uh, automatically switch on or off depending on the uh, lighting conditions and the color of the dash will change to give you a better view depending on the lighting conditions uh, currently we're in low light so it's changed over to the to the darker view Similar to the Touring, um, you've got uh, battery voltage, uh, you've got temperature, you've got tire pressure monitoring, your gear position will appear here. All of your warning lights go across the top and there is another feature just here that I'll explain in just a second. Obviously your lights, traction control, uh, engine management lights, and then rev counter and fuel are just there as well. To get into the dash a little bit and show you some of the functionality, some of the things that you can change, let's just go into the functions. So you've got rider modes, you can uh, go between brightness, so you can switch between an automatic and your own settings. Heated grips, heated seat, uh, and you can turn the touch screen on and off. Now, on the previous model, it was quite difficult to change the rider modes. And so this function button, just one push, allows me to cycle through and change those rider modes. So that instantly that is much more accessible than the other model. Same goes with the heated grips. You really had to scroll for all the menus and stuff like that, which was almost impossible to do when you were riding the bike. Now, if I just cycle through the menus really quickly, I'm at the heated grips and I can change those on the fly. That is a vast improvement on the touring model, I must say. So let's just switch now into a mode that allows us to see the settings. Um, my phone is currently paired to this bike. So at the moment we are seeing the CarPlay view. Um, 
obviously you get a number of apps that are usable on here including Google Maps so obviously no need for a sat nav but you will still need to charge your phone so I suspect that's where your, your uh, USB chargers are going to come into play here um, you get all of the same functionalities that you would do with uh, Google or sorry CarPlay in your car um, and I won't go into that too much but you know for example WhatsApp you can do uh, WhatsApp messages on the fly using your headset um, you can change various settings in your phone there's parking apps you know there's a lot of stuff um, that you can get into as you would be able to using your phone um, so let's just go back and let's go back to the bike So here we are in the bike settings. Now this looks very much like Apple CarPlay, but it isn't. Um, this is the standard settings menu for the bike, all designed to obviously give you the same sort of functionality that you would get in your phone. Some nice features like a G-force meter. I'm sure not many people are gonna use this, but it's quite cool to have anyway. Um, you can look through your media. Membership center, I think is gonna be to do with uh, live uh, updates and stuff like that. But personally, we do recommend that you come into a dealership for those. Fault query will give you any fault codes so we can pre-diagnose any issues that you have with the bike. Hopefully there won't be any, but inevitably it is a mechanical thing, so it may come up in the future. And here are the bike settings. Now there is a lot of information here. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but I'm just gonna give you a bit of an overview of what you're getting for your money. So you compare two uh, Bluetooth headsets to this bike simultaneously and control the functionality of the bike using your personalized buttons if you wish. You can pair your phone, in which case my phone is currently paired to this bike, and you can also pair to Wi-Fi. Now, I assume this is going to be for downloading updates uh, and stuff like that, um, but I'm sure some of you guys, when you've got the bike, will find other functionalities for this use, for this as well. Um, here we've got all the safety functionalities. Uh, so you can go through and switch these on and off manually, though um, a lot of these do turn on and off depending on what rider mode you're in. Um, obviously we're in rain at the moment, so it's automatically turned the quick shift off. I can also change the uh, speed at which that we can touch the, uh, the touch screen. So uh, if you are easily tempted, um, you can turn it down. Uh, this does work using gloves as well, by the way. Um, I don't have a pair of gloves on me, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it does. Uh, we can go into vehicle settings. So within here, we can change the drive modes. Again, you can't do that unless the bike is running so i'll talk you through that in just a minute um, and here you can see the uh, grip heater and seat settings as well but i would use the quick function buttons rather than using this menu because it's a bit of a pain in the bum to get into here we've got screen brightness so you can change from adaptive or to, to manual uh, drop down page prompter will bring messages up at the top you can turn that off and you can change the shift reminder um, from whatever RPM you want really. So if you want to save a bit of fuel or ride it less aggressively while you're running it in, that could be a nice thing to change. Here we've got all your media settings for your phone, ringtones, all that kind of stuff. So obviously if it's all in your helmet, you can edit all of those settings in here, which is really nice. Um, and here we've got all of the switches uh, customization. So you've got the function and the custom button here. You can change a number of different functionalities to suit what you want. Uh, all your time settings, language settings, you can switch between metric and imperial, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit, uh, PSI, etc. So loads and loads of settings in that dash. And then we can go back to CarPlay here. Um, now I'm back into my, uh, my phone. I can make and receive phone calls. Um, I can make and receive or uh, uh, create uh, text messages all using a, uh, a Bluetooth headset. The touch screen for me is quite intuitive. Um, you, let's just put that back into the standard mode there. Um, it works very well with gloves. Uh, the other feature that this bike has is blind spot recognition. So just in the back of the bike, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it very well. There is a change, there is this unit just here. Now that is a rearward facing radar, similar to what you would see on a Ducati, but the blind spot warnings do not show in the mirror. That is a good thing because it means if you crash the bike or drop it, you are not going to be paying £400 for a mirror. Instead, you get blind spot warnings for cars and objects being in your blind spot on the dash. I can't show you that because obviously we're not riding at the moment, um, but, uh, but you'll just have to trust me that functionality exists and it can be an absolute lifesaver. So I'm just going to start the bike and show you me cycling through uh, the different power modes. 
Um, it does have an auto start function. And once I've done that, uh, I will come back to you and explain what exactly you're seeing on the screen. So what this effectively is showing you is as we go through the different rider modes, there are a number of off-road riding modes that uh, enable and disable certain elements of the bike, like traction control. You can see in this most extreme version, All Terrain Plus, it turns off the front and rear wheel ABS independently. So that is the difference between dual channel ABS. You've also got traction control um, and we've also got uh, a form of stability control as well, all of which gets turned off on the bike. So, in summary then, um, let's just turn this off so the battery doesn't die. In summary then, um, if you were to test ride an 800 MT Touring, effectively you have ridden one of these bikes. The main difference is, if you want to compete with the likes of BMW, Ducati and so on with some of the systems that they're putting on their bike, uh, at 11299 this bike is an absolute steal. I mean, there's nothing on the market that I'm aware of that comes with a full set of luggage, a four year warranty, and it also comes with service activated breakdown as well. So for now, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. We've got WhatsApp, live chat, all the social medias. Pick up the phone and ask us any questions that you've got, or feel free to drop into the showroom and you can try the bike on for size. That's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care.